Are you okay? Um, I was a, I was 19 when it first k kicked off. Well, I've had it since I was a year old, so I've grown up with it. I was 11. This is birth. I was 25 years old. It can happen at any time. It could, it could ha happen to yourself at any time, um, or you might be born with it. At the age of 12, and the next minute I just keeled over, hit my head off my chest or drawers, landed on the floor, and I was um, out of it. And uh, I had scraped my face and the wall on the way down and I had cracked my ribs in the wall and so on. I, I came round in the upstairs of a butcher's shop at, and it was an antiquated butcher's shop at that with a, a dumb waiter and, uh, well, I, I didn't know quite where I'd gone. The person that's having it has got no control and also no control over whenever it's going to happen. Um, so it can be a really embarrassing situation uh, and it can affect um, people's lives in, in all areas, employment and, and relationships. One in 130 people. Um, I think it's one in 130. But that seems like a hell of a lot of people to me. To me, it's just a con it's not a condition. It's just something that you learn to live with. It's over activity, electrical activity in the brain. I mean, that, that's how it feels. There's a lot more understanding now than there was years ago. Many years ago, people used to get locked away in a mental institution um, if they had epilepsy. Uh, that doesn't happen now. And I think there's a lot of people out there that they're frightened to admit they've got it or just don't know that they've got it because there is such a stigma attached to it. A lot of people think you must have some learning disability if you have epilepsy, which isn't the case. Anybody can develop epilepsy. People just don't. They, they expect, if as soon as you say you've got epilepsy, they expect you to fall on the floor and start frothing at the mouth and are almost disappointed when you don't. You don't look as if you've got anything wrong with you. Well, what you're supposed to look like. Um, that's what I had back with anyway. And because of the, the many different types of epilepsy, they might not even notice that you're having a seizure. This is a nice confession. Uh, it comes from Andrew. Thank you very much, Dean Simon and the crew. This confession concerns again. I didn't lose consciousness or anything, I just had this funny feeling deja vu and apparently I wasn't aware that I was doing it but I did a lot of lip smacking. Well I have a kind of range of like different seizures from partial seizures to, um, to, I always forget the name of them, that's the thing. A tonic clonic might come maybe once every six months. Tonic clonic to partial seizures. I have tonic clonic seizures occasionally at night but it is only at night now. Um, there are various different kinds of seizures that people have if they have epilepsy. If it's a partial seizure, it's just in a small part of the brain and stays in that part. Um, if it's a generalised seizure, then it affects the whole of the brain. No, 
unfortunately at the moment um, it's just can happen at any time. I don't get warnings as such. I feel the colour draining out of my face. I feel me going all goosebumps. And if I don't sit down, I might fall down. So after that, I usually go for a wee sleep. Uh, that's a normal day-to-day -day, uh, seizure for me. Should we call an ambulance? No. Move the table so she doesn't fall on it. Set her back. Should we call an ambulance? Not yet. You're right now. Because there's nothing more frightening than seeing lots of people staring at you when you come round. Um, especially when you don't know what you've done yourself, because you can do some strange things. <laughs> if someone has a complex partial seizure, uh, it can be quite difficult because they're totally confused and they might go to walk straight out onto a busy road. So you want to gently try and manoeuvre them into a safe position. If you see someone having a tonic-clonic seizure, if you can find something on them that tells you that they have epilepsy and a number to phone for, for help, then that's fine. But if you don't know that person, you don't know why that person's having a seizure. They might not have epilepsy. They might have something seriously wrong with them. So you would phone an ambulance if you don't know anything about them. If you know them or you've found something on them that tells you about them, then you would provide the, the first aid and stay with them. Uh, and what you want to, to t observe is the, the sort of generalised time to allow a seizure to go on is no more than five minutes. Um, but that person it might have down in their safety, their information that you've got to phone an ambulance anyway, whatever. Most people with epilepsy don't have seizures. Between about 70 and 80 percent of people with epilepsy, their seizures are controlled by medication. So I've, well, I've been on, the med on medication since I was a year old. Because I was virtually seizure-free and controlled by the medication for 20 years. And then hitting the menopause, boom, it's all gone out the window. It can take years. It's not an instant thing. Once they got me established on phenytoin, that seems to have been the best one to control the seizures, although I take another one in conjunction and it's taken a while again to find another one that will work in tandem with it. I actually had difficulties with my epilepsy. I had intractable epilepsy that couldn't be controlled by medication, um, but I actually had surgery for my epilepsy and I had surgery, I think it must be almost 14 or 15 years ago now, and I've been seizure-free for that time. Nobody would take the tablets that I'm taking if they read the side effects. So I walked around school like a zombie for five or six years and was lucky that anything sank in. Literature, like I, I'm, I mean, I, I think I read Crime and Punishment when I was about 14, and then that just set me off on notes from underground and the idiot, and and then more recently I, I became obsessed with Bulgakov. So if there was one place I was going to say to everybody, you have to go and see it. It's the the Bulgakov Museum, um, and near, uh, which is I think near uh, Patriarchs Pond, 
from the book as well. And like, it's but his apartment is obviously a museum now, as I'm sure you and everybody else in Russia knows. But um, but you know, I I love that. It's my favourite thing to do. Here. So let me let me ask any one of you three uh, to give me a, a, a status report of the station. This was an amazing. <laughs> okay, li- I'm not allowed to drive. Well, I, I'm I'm not allowing myself to drive because I'm having seizures all, like quite a lot of the time, and I've I've never had a mark where it's been like a year where I could possibly go out and drive again. With epilepsy, you can't drive unless you've been seizure free for a year. Um, I wasn't allowed to drive until I was 26. No, I did drive. No. I asked the doctor about that, and he said no. And I've had my licence taken off me twice because I've had started having breakthrough seizures. But now, because I've established a pattern of having seizures at night only for the last ten years, I am allowed to drive. And it's, it's a great help. <clears throat> it really is. It makes me feel fairly normal. I say fairly. Someone that's diagnosed might be told by their family they can't go out on their own, they can't live on their own, they can't do anything. Um, Others might be told, well, that's fine, we'll just go on with life and we'll manage to cope with it. It's something you live with. You have to live with it. Um, You can try and fight against it for a little while, but that won't get you very far. I think initially when I was told that I had epilepsy... I was very angry because the consultant that told me didn't even speak to me, but told me that I would have to be on tablets for the rest of my life. And at 12, it, that's a bit of a daunting thought. In a way, it came out of the blue because you had to wait the two years to get diagnosed. But when it did come out, I was actually quite relieved because then I knew that it was something that I could then focus on getting better. I did try coming off my tablets to, with, under doctor's supervision, but it didn't work. And I now realise I, I do have to take tablets for the rest of my life. Two people that have the same kind of seizures and the same kind of epilepsy, and one of them might cope perfectly well and the other one can't cope. Uh, and a lot of that depends on the support that people have got around them and the information that they've got. Why do you need more workers? Because it's they're like hands-on. Manual labour, hands on manual labour. And then along came the Industrial Revolution. Machines were introduced. Um, what can a machine do? That can build stuff. Build stuff. I got all the way through school, which was a bit of a challenge, but I made it. And I came out with some qualifications and I did my nursing training. And I worked as a state enrolled nurse for six years before I started having a family. I worked in. Here, Myers, yeah. and I worked in Paisley's in Jamaica Street. Um, all my friends that I had from I was younger to now, I'm still friends with them. I still go on about my life. I still try my best to go to my work and things like that. I don't. It's not really got me down. But sometimes somebody might say how you're feeling. You're feeling perfectly fine. But then the next minute you're not, and then they'll ask you, "Why did you come out today? Why did you come to work today?" And it's not something you've got any control over. So you just kind of have to make the best of it and just get on with it. Epilepsy can have a lot of adverse side effects, but you can never judge it and you can't 
um, inform people of how things are going to be. A lot depends on the support they've got around them um, and also support for the people that are affected by it if they're living or, or providing support for someone with epilepsy. I think I, might, I must be a strong person because a lot of things people wouldn't t attempt to do. But sometimes that's through people telling them, no, you can't do that. And you kind of just have to stick up for yourself and say, well, I'm an adult and I can do that. Good morning, Brooks Bean Medical Centre. How can I help? Um, I'm afraid Dr Marshall's off today. Could you phone back tomorrow, please? Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi. Hi. Hi, I've got an appointment with the practice nurse. Um, do you your name, please? Um, Gillian Brown. And date of birth? 26 of the first 90. Um, would you mind just taking yep. a seat in your way? Thanks. <coughs> Gillian Brown, would you like to come through, uh -huh. please? Thanks. The whole point of epilepsy care, the whole point of getting involved is hopefully to allow people to take control of their life and allow them to actually plan their own lifestyles, hopefully in a way that means that their epilepsy becomes less of an intrusion and less of a danger to them. Um, one of the good things about support groups is when patients get together and share their experiences and they know exactly what it is that helps them, helps them remember their drugs, helps them minimise the effect of seizures on their life, whether it's in planning their holidays or whether it's in planning their working life or family life. The Lanarkshire Epilepsy Support Group has been set up to provide support for people within, with epilepsy and also information and support for people that are living or working with people with epilepsy. Um, it's made me not feel alone because before like, I'd met up with Helen and Debbie and everybody else, um, I was on my own. It was like my own wee world, like I've got epilepsy and I just kind of didn't really speak about it. it. I didn't know anybody when I first moved here and it seemed like a good way of getting to know people. The support group is excellent. I think it's a thing that Lanarkshire obviously needs um, and it has been needing for years. It's a very good support for people with epilepsy and the carers. Everybody's very uh, easy to talk to. I think it's really important for patients to take part in these things. There still is a lot of problems um, with, for example, employment. Uh, a lot of people, if they go for an interview um, or if they fill in an application form, quite often it's got on it if you suffer from epilepsy and it's very difficult to know if you didn't get that job because of your inabilities or because of the epilepsy. It's um, a, a difficult one. It's been around for a long time, but uh, nobody's got a handle on it properly yet. Because actually most people with epilepsy don't have seizures. So although you're diagnosed with epilepsy, it doesn't mean that you're going to have seizures every day continually. Um, and if you can explain that and give some advice, then a lot of employers are quite happy. It's the lack of knowledge, I think, that causes the problems. And I think the better we understand it, and the more people understand it, the better. It's just part of life now, you know. Having confidence in yourself and other people having confidence in you, you can you can live a normal life. Hoft is a good master. But it's just finding the balance, as with most things. Just remember, you're still who you are, you're still a person, and like nobody can take that away from you.